<laughs> oh, ye of little faith. The Eagles now 4 8 and 1, 24 21 win over the New Orleans Saints. What, did you think it was going to be easy? Huh? You got a 10 and 2 team on the other side. They're playing for something, for goodness sakes. They won nine straight games, and the Eagles managed to take care of that offense and the defense as well. My goodness, the Saints defense, number one in the NFL, and what the Eagles offense did with Jalen Hurts. You think you got to start him again? You think he'll start for the remainder of the season? Wow. Uh, I, I, there doesn't seem to be any decision to be made about it. We will have all the interviews for you. We've got Doug Peterson coming up. We'll have Jalen Hurts coming up. We'll uh, talk to Seth Joyner, Barrett Brooks, Ray Dittinger as Fletcher Cox and his defensive teammates. What a game they played because that offense in the New Orleans Saints was something to be contended with as well. No question. Michael Thomas, Ray thought Thomas would have more catches by himself than the Eagles wide receivers combined. I don't know if they got there, Ray. There's Taysom Hill, the Saints quarterback, um, shaking hands with Byron Scott. And th this was a real tough, very good Saints team that will contend for a Super Bowl potentially. And for the Eagles to do this, for the Eagles to win mm. with their backs on the, against the wall after Doug Peterson and the Eagles Brain Trust made a switch this week and decided that they were going to start Jalen Hurts today and maybe for the remainder of the season. Brandon Graham with a nice, a couple of nice plays during this game. The defense played so well. Did they not, Barrett? I mean, Carson oh. Wentz. Take a look at Carson Wentz. He's fist bumping, but uh, he's, I mean, you know. He's got to be inside. That's a tough thing, to, a tough pill to swallow, isn't it, Barrett? You see Jake Driscoll right there. He balled today. He sure the did. The rookie. I mean, rookies stood up and, and, and were accounted for. What, what the hell is going on? Am I in the matrix right now? <laughs> did we have two rushers for over 100 yards? We ran the ball consistent. We played consistent football for three quarters. Is this the matrix? Red or green pill? What is going on? Is this the same team we, we saw all year? Do we have a quarterback controversy? No. No. That's a guy. great point. He's the guy. Yeah, he is the guy. Yeah. And, and also, interesting, and I don't know what you would expect when <laughs> Jalen Hurts were to, uh, was to leave the field and the defense came out and he did not go to Carson Wentz. At least it didn't appear that he went to Carson Wentz. I don't know if that's something you would consider to be normal. Ray, no, you would consider normal. to be normal? It's not normal. No. You, normally, the quarterback group uh, is, is its own team unto itself, and a lot of times they will confer. It does not happen today, certainly, with, with uh, Jalen Hurts is doing an interview right now, and um, we will, uh, we'll hear from him in a little bit. We bring in Ray Dittinger. Ray, your thoughts on this one? A strong Eagles win. Yeah, it was. It was a, it was a, it was a really good win for them. Uh, to... Um, you know, the Saints are, a, I mean, they're a good team. Uh, they came in here, they were the hottest team in the league. They had won nine in a row. They had the number one defense. I think one of the things that we did see here was one of the things that we talked about in pregame, which is the fact that Jalen Hurts represented something that the Saints hadn't had to deal with all year, which was a, a true running quarterback. I mean, you look at the teams that they had played, and listen, they were 10-2, and two, and give them a full credit for that. But if you looked at the quarterbacks that they had played, they had played Matt Ryan twice. They had played Tom Brady twice. They had played Matthew Stafford. They had played uh, Derek Carr. They had played Nick Foles. I mean, they had played all pretty much pocket passers. They had never had to deal with a quarterback who, had, who represented a real running threat, that represented a real zone read kind of runner, uh, a, a real RPO kind of guy. Uh, and you saw in several situations in this game that – that they, they have problems with that. You know, on the long Miles Sanders run that he broke away for 82 yards for the touchdown run was largely set up because of the fact that they had to respect the fact that there was a fake in there and they weren't sure if he was going to hand off or whether he was going to take it himself. Kind of froze the linebackers and created some space inside that when Sanders hit it, he had a full lane to the end zone. That's the kind of thing they wouldn't have had to deal with if they were, if they were playing with a pocket passer. So I think that, that multi-dimensional kind of uh, offensive threat that Jalen Hurts brought to the field today 
really gave problems to a Saints defense that was number one coming in. And the other thing was that the Eagles had a couple things happen today that they hadn't had happen before. My, my goodness, they intercepted a pass. We hadn't seen, them, thought that we hadn't seen them intercept a pass since the first Giants game uh, here. Uh, that they got that a couple fumble. of takeaways. They won, they won the giveaway takeaway for one of the rare occasions. Uh, and as Barrett said, they had two backs over 100 yards. And I thought that one of the things that's... That, and we've been stressing this and talking about this so much all along, is that Miles Sanders is such a threat. I mean, he is a home run hitter in the backfield. He really is. Uh, and he's a guy that you have to keep feeding the ball to him because at any point in the game, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, any single carry, he can pop it and take it to the house. I mean, he's that explosive a runner. You can't, have, you can't do what the Eagles have done way, way too often this year, which is get totally away from him and lose him in the offense. He's too explosive a player. And this year now, he's had touchdown runs of 74 yards, 74 yards, and 82 yards. There aren't too many backs in the NFL that have had three touchdown runs of more than 70 yards in one season. I don't know if it's ever happened in the history of this franchise, but that's the kind of player that Miles Sanders is. And I think that having Hurts running the offense today kept Sanders in the game longer. And that in and of itself made this a better offensive team. Seth Joyner, Miles Sanders, 115 yards rushing. Jalen Hurts, 106 yards rushing. Uh, and then Hurts, 17 of 30, 167 yards. To be sure, this was a total team win. It really was. But the story of the game, of course, is Jalen Hurts' first NFL start. You have long said that the Eagles have had a quarterback problem. You said this through the majority of the season. Do they still after today's game? Absolutely. Because Carson Wentz is still the, the, going to be the long-term starter on this football team. We're just finding out with Jalen Hurts that he's so much more than that little read option that they've been putting him in to run. Um, and I've been calling for this all along. Let's expand his playbook. Let's give him a little bit more. You know, I think the difference is, and people... You know, I just want to set the record straight, Michael, because everybody thinks that I dislike Carson Wentz as a quarterback. I don't dislike the man because I don't know the man. What I dislike is the level of play, his performance, what it's looked like on the field as a franchise quarterback. OK, let that be stated, because on social media, I'm taking a whole bunch of heat that, oh, you just hate you hate Carson and you just want jail. Listen, I want the best quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles to be successful. <clears throat> on the field. And if that's Carson Wentz, then that's Carson Wentz. If it's Jalen Hurts, then it's Jalen Hurts. I think the biggest difference that you saw in this game today is the quarterback who made very quick, decisive decisions. Um, you had a quarterback that made good decisions. He tried to prolong plays, you know, when he could. And when it wasn't there, realizing he was out of the pocket, he just threw the ball away. Against man coverage, he realized when it was man coverage and when it was zone coverage and when he would break the pocket, he'd get the yards that he needed down the field. Um, people are going to say, oh, my God, you know, they ran the ball 36 times today and they only threw it 30 times today. That's why Jalen Hurts was so successful. But let's just consider how many of those runs. I want to know how many of those runs were call runs, those 18 carries that Jalen that Jalen Hurts actually had. How many of those were call runs opposed to scrambles where he just made something happen? So I don't think that, you know, the narrative is going to be what, what everybody thought it was going to be. Listen, Carson Wentz is still the starter on this football team. Obviously, Jalen Hurst gave this team a big lift, and I think he deserves, in light of where this football team sits, I just think he deserves to play the rest of the season. Yeah. And you know what? If he hits a bump in the road, if he has a tough time, then you know what you can do? You can always go back to Carson. Carson is learning something through all this. He's standing on the sideline and watching and getting, the, getting a lesson from a different perspective. And I think more than anything, that's what I've been calling for, not a complete switch at quarterback but an opportunity for him to sit back and see the game from a different perspective. Seth, devil's advocate, I don't know how you can say that Carson Wentz is the Eagles quarterback because if this guy plays lights out, and he did not today, certainly there were mistakes that he made, but he did not have a sack while Carson Wentz has been blasted all season. And you can blame the offensive line all you want, but you look at 17-30 to 30 by Jalen Hurts, 167 yards is pedestrian. One touchdown, no picks, though. Passer rating, 83.6. That's pedestrian, but he did not get sacked. 
He ran the ball 18 times, 106 rushing yards, and he did lose a fumble in the fourth quarter that broke us out into a, into a Josh Sweat, I would say. Uh, we were a little bit nervous about that. But, Seth, uh, you know, uh, again, I got to go back at you because a lot of people are saying Jalen Hurts is the guy. He's playing well right now. The moment you put Jalen Hurts in as starter, then you've got to expect that he's going to compete for that job full time. And if he plays well enough, he'll get it. Well, but let's let's get to let's get through this season, Michael. Let's get through this season. Listen, we've seen court. I've seen quarterbacks before that, you know, um, that, you know, sink into the abyss. And then all of a sudden they find their way and they come back. OK, I'm not going to say that Carson Wentz is done. You can talk about what Jalen Hurts has done. And listen, who was who was called for Jalen Hurts more than anybody else on this show over the last five weeks? It has certainly been myself. OK, but I'm not going to write Carson Wentz off and say that the guy can't play anymore. And I'm certainly not going to make a decision on five quarters of football. You know, let's let this thing play out. Let's see if Jalen Hurts can win out. If, 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 in fact, Doug has made the decision that Jalen Hurts is going to be the guy the rest of the way. If Jalen Hurts wins out, okay, let's go into the offseason. Let's give him the rest of the playbook. Let's see how he digests that. Let's see what he looks like in training camp, and let's open up an open competition. Let's see if Carson's man enough to compete against Jalen Hurts for the job. You're going to tell me that anything that you saw Jalen, Jalen Hurts run today that Carson Wentz actually can't run some of those plays? Yeah, I, yeah, he can't I run did. fast, or as fast as Jalen Hurts. Man, that guy's got legs. He can move. Carson can run. He's mobile, but he's not. he does not have the speed that Jalen Hurts has. Ray, real quick, how much did the element of surprise help Hurts and the Eagles today that the Saints really didn't have a heck of a lot to go on, and even if they saw all that tape, they still never played the guy on the field? Uh, a lot, I, I, because I think that bringing Hertz into the lineup um, sort of prompted the offensive coaches, Doug Peterson and the offensive coaches, to reach into the playbook and come up with some new things. I mean, I thought that I saw more pre-snap motion in this game than I had seen before. Absolutely. Uh, I had some more yep. different looks uh, at the line of scrimmage. Uh, there was more deception. They ran a, they ran a couple of uh, uh, just d double reverse end around kinds of things that I hadn't really seen before. Because they knew, they could tell from very early in the game, that the Saints really didn't know what they were dealing with with Jalen Hurts. They were, they were kind, of, kind of a read and react kind of mode, which is unusual for them. They're normally a tee off and get up the field kind of defense. And they were sort of back on their heels trying to figure out what Hurts was going to do. That gave the Eagles offense and it gave the play callers really an opportunity to try some different things, which they did, uh, and I think that that had a lot to do with it. And the play calling, I think, really helped Hurts. I mean, they did the Eagles coaches in their play calling. Some of it, some of it, Hurts created on his own, but a lot of it was play by design. Uh, I mean, a lot of those rollouts, those sprint out type of plays, both right and left, were plays that we had been calling for the coaches to let Hurt, uh, Wentz run all year. And I think he could have run some of that. I think Seth made that sort of point that there was that those plays were in the book before. They weren't calling them for Wentz. They called them today, and they ran them effectively. But I think you have to give Hertz credit because he took it to the next step. He played it with a lot of intelligence and smarts, especially, especially for a guy making his first start against the number one defense. He didn't try to do too much. You know, if the play wasn't there, he threw it away. He didn't hold the ball in the pocket and take the big sack. And there were a couple third downs, at least three that I can think of, that very simple. He got in the shotgun, took a direct snap, put it on his hip, and just ran around the end and made it look easy. Yeah. He, 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 he made it look really easy. Now, that play's been there all year. The coaches just haven't called it. So I think that putting Hurts in there gave the coaches sort of the freedom to and uh, the opportunity to call some plays and do some offensive things in terms of design, even pre-snap design, that they hadn't done before, and it all worked to their advantage and give, the, and give Hertz a tremendous amount of credit. He ran it with a lot of poise. He ran it with a lot of smarts, didn't take unnecessary chances, and most of all, didn't take sacks, which had been killing the team all year, and until the very end, didn't make a mistake where he turned the ball over. He just played real, solid, efficient football. Did everything you could have asked a first-time quarterback to do against a really good defense and wins you a game that hardly anybody, except for you, mm -hmm. thought that the Eagles could win. Ray, well, I thank, you know, I, I really don't know what to say, Ray. I, do, are you going to give me an award now? 
Oh, okay. Well, you asked me to say that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, checks in the mail, Ray. Barrett Brooks, take a look at Doug Peterson's record coaching backup quarterbacks. The man's pretty good. Nick Foles. Oh, Nick Foles twice. We're counting him twice. And today, Jalen Hurts. Nick Foles in 2017, five and one record, backing up Carson Wentz in 2018, backing up Wentz five and two. And today, Jalen Hurts one and zero. That's a total of 11 and three with Wentz. 35, 33, and 1, barely above 500 with a backup quarterback, 11 and 3. Maybe we should just shuffle the deck chairs every week for Dougie Fresh and see what happens. But how about this, Barrett? Did, you noted the offensive line and Jack Driscoll and how well he played. Uh, and Jalen Hurts, not one sack today. Did the line help Hurts more than Hurts helped the line? Who played better because of whom? I, I think it was more so Doug. Doug played better because Doug called a better game for his quarterback. Understanding that he couldn't have that quarterback go out there and throw for 50 times. I mean, it's, 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 it's logical to think that, all right, he, this kid can go out there and run. But those plays never left the playbook. They've always been in the playbook. He hasn't called them for Carson. I don't know why he didn't believe that Carson plays well out on the edge. He actually does. He plays better in tempo type of offense. But we didn't call plays like that for Carson. So I think it's more telling um, that, you know, the play selection helped this offensive line a lot because when you can come off and initiate contact and run in the ball, it gives you a better sense of art than I'm not just sitting back pass blocking and getting my butt kicked. I can now come off the ball and influence the game. I can put my hands on somebody. I can be more aggressive. And that's what you want. And from that, they knew that they could run the ball. It slows down the pass. They're coming off the ball. They're running the ball. It slows them down. So play action. Those are all things that they got just because of play, uh, play calling and also the defense had to make sure that they recognized that this guy at the quarterback position can move. So since he can move, you have to play dis discipline in how you play your defense. Defensive ends just couldn't just crash it. They had to make sure they stayed in their rush lanes because he could easily get outside and run and make the first down. You saw it happen. So that's what happened. You know, this guy took advantage of, of, of play calling, number one, and number two, they ran the ball, and he, and he just played phenomenal. I mean, I, I'm, I'm blown away that he played as well as he did. 100 Eagle, yards passing, me a rushing? I'm yeah. not buying. He, 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 I, I says am stop not buying. 106 I, I yards. Am, he averaged six I'm yards not, almost every time he touched the ball on the ground. Yes, Seth, quickly. Got to take a break. Go ahead. I'm not, I, I'm, I, I'm not buying the, the play calling thing because that's going to be the narrative because you know what that does? That bails, that bails Carson Wentz out even more. That, oh, they called plays for him that they didn't call for Carson. Stop it. Stop it, man. No, 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 no. They ran the ball no, no, no. consistently. Abs absolutely. Yes. But we've been talking about that forever. Well, we've wait, wait, wait. wait but said, if Doug didn't you call know? it for him, how could you not say it's play calling? If he didn't call the run play Because he's not. Him. Because 18, I can promise you, Doug Peterson did not call 18 running plays for, for Jalen Hurts. I'm not it talking about that. I'm talking about that Miles way. Sanders. I don't even talk about Hurts. I'm talking about Miles Sanders. I understand Sanders. that. Listen. Miles got the same amount of carries that he always get. He got 14 touches carrying the ball, and he got another what? Um, four. Another, another four, four catches. Uh, yeah. Another four. Another four catches. So he's got his 18 touches. That's my whole point. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna ride this narrative that oh, Doug called so many different plays, and we were so much more run heavy than we ever been. No, 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 no. We ain't going there. We're not gonna let. Doug Peterson, we ain't gonna let Carson Wentz off the off the hook like that. That's just not gonna. That's happen. not letting him off okay? the hook. That's because telling wanna, to him. That's more yeah, telling sure to him is. that he sure doesn't do is. that. Sure it is because, sure it is because what you're telling me, you're telling me that Doug Peterson came out and called 18 running plays for for his rookie. His rookie quarterback today. I ain't buying that. Yeah. Well, all right. How about this? You take out. Him. You take out those 18 running plays, the Eagles ran the ball just 18 times, and they passed it 48 times, for goodness sakes. 48 there passes go. to there 18 rushes. i got to take a break. We're